a very quick shout out to a man who has really helped me out. His name is Hiro Imafuji. He has got a channel, link in the description. It's a, a channel all about kendo because he's a kendo sensei after all. And he really helped me out because I asked him a, a few days ago, I asked him to check out my uh, Jordan Nokamai video. And I asked him to, you know, give me some, maybe a piece of advice. I was expecting a little content. He made a huge video full of advices and tips just for me privately it was like private so you didn't even get views on that one only me and i really want to say thank you that was amazing and this is my way to uh, to thank him which i was going to give him a little bit of exposure very humble man really good teacher and uh, check him out if you like kendo subscribe to his channel he's got a lot of content Back on my topic now. Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and today I'd like to get right to the topic Ashigaru because there are a lot of things to say. So first of all, what is a Ashigaru? When an Ashigaru is a foot soldier which works for the samurai class. This is the easiest way or the broadest definition of this term. Ashi in Japanese means foot or leg. In this case we could, we could translate it as foot or feet. And Garu comes from the adjective Karui which means uh, light. So light feet. So the first thing I'd like to say about them is that we need to understand that the figure and the importance and the usage and deployment of Ashigaru changed completely over time. So this is the sort of evolution chart of the Ashigaru. So first of all we have peasant uh, soldiers, peasant foot soldiers which work for either, they, are, they work for samurai as I said, but there are sort of two kinds. Those who are loyal to some land owning samurai, or those who have no particular loyalty and they basically work as mercenaries. This is sort of the first kind of Ashigaru. From this sort of unruly mercenaries, the Ashigaru will rise. Now the Ashigaru will become a very important component, if not the main component in feudal Japanese armies from the Muromachi period onward. And it is in the Sengoku Jidai that the Ashigaru will form the backbone of all warring clans' feudal armies. Now it is from the 14th century to the 16th century, to be more specific, that Ashigaru actually start changing. They gradually remove themselves from the sort of farmer's class and they start becoming actual professional soldiers. Although this division is never 100% perfect and it's never 100% clear. And I'll get back to that because of course you know that in Japan there is a very well structured and precise class system or sort of status pyramid, if you will. It is through Oda Nobunaga that they become actual paid professional soldiers because um, maybe some were part-time at the end of the day, they were farmers and when they were called they would be paid to work uh, for as soldiers, as infantry. But you have to consider that the very early sort of mercenaries well were not paid or they would be paid in loot. As time will progress in some Han or domains, some Ashigaru will actually attain the social status of samurai while in other places they won't. Now this is interesting because now I'd like to spend a few more words on this concept of social class, social status before actually starting to examine the sort of equipment and the sort of armor, sort of weapons that they actually got to use and how to distinguish them from the actual samurai. Um, because you have to understand that in Japan you've got a very structured, organized society. Now in this society, for example, you've got the bushi, who are the, the samurai class, okay, all bushi are samurai, the warrior class. 
and then you've got the farmers, okay, and then you've got all the others. So the farmers already have a reasonably high position in the social status scale, but the Ashigaru are difficult to understand because if you think about it, they are not samurai until uh, until later periods, of course, as I said, some will become samurai in some areas, they will be considered samurai, but at first and for the majority of time, Ashigaru were not samurai, but they were not farmers either when they start becoming professional soldiers, so they sort of go in, in between these two lines. So at first they are farmers who also fight, then they become warriors who also do, uh, who are also peasants, but then they will detach themselves. And when they detach themselves from that farmer position, um, but they are still not samurai, they are not bushi, they are in between. They are a little bit outside the social structure. And this is uh, how, why, in some areas, probably, they actually start to be considered uh, samurai, perhaps like lower samurai, if you will. So having said all this, what about the weapons and... Now, I'd like to begin from the armor because the weapon will be the things that actually will change the most. But as far as armor is concerned, well, very typical of the Ashigaru uh, sort of soldier is the Jingasa. Now, the Jingasa is a this kind of hat. It's typical of Asia, isn't it? It's just normally when you imagine it, you imagine it made of uh, straws. And that's the typical uh, peasant sort of uh, kasa, it's actually called kasa, which is the same word for umbrella in Japanese. Um, but the jingasa is the same thing, but made for, for war. So it's either made of iron, sometimes steel, and other times leather. But apart from that, Ashigaru, they go from being um, completely unarmored to being heavily armored. So you've got lots of different kinds of Ashigaru as far as armor is concerned, and it will change over time. And at the end of the day, if you look at a fully armored Ashigaru, you might think, considering the fact you've got a, a door, a cuirass, you've got sode sometimes, sometimes they don't have sode, sometimes they do. Um, they, they might have haidate, so the quiz, they might, you know, you look at them and you're like, well, hold on a minute, they, they are almost armored the same way as a samurai. But uh, no, in Sengoku Jidai, as I said, the Ashigaru formed the backbone of the armies. What this means is that you've got a certain number of samurai who are the elite fighters, and then you've got a lot of Ashigaru. Battles change from single combat to massed formations. And this is why the sort of armaments, the sort of armor, and also the sort of weapons, but well, we'll get back to the weapons in a moment, the sort of armor that the Ashigaru are wearing, or were wearing, is munition quality, mass produced. So you've got mass production of cuirasses that these um, Ashigaru would wear and that is very different from the sort of very specially tailored armor that samurai would wear both in Muromachi Jidai and earlier because in that case you would have like sort of old-fashioned uh, armor, armor for samurai and although there are many different kinds and types of armor I will make it I'm prepared I've been preparing a video where I discuss all different types of samurai armor but to just say quickly, you have, for example, the Oyoroi of the Samurai, and Ashigaru could never wear, nor even afford, a Oyoroi. But even in the 16th century, when you've got Tose Gusoku, although it might look similar to the sort of armor that the Ashigaru are wearing, you have to consider that the level of quality would be very, very different. Now, moving to the weapons, the Ashigaru in earlier times, they would, would, would be armed with Naginata, Yari, Sword, and the Bow. The thing is though that training a soldier to use a bow or a yumi effectively takes a lot of time. This invention here, when in uh, 1543, 1543 the Portuguese will bring the matchlock type arquebus and these will be mass produced in Tanegashima and this is why they are called Tanegashima Teppo in Japanese. Uh, from the name of the island where these are the where, the, where these were literally mass produced. Um, the uh, daimyo, the warlords of Japanese, of feudal Japan, will arm their ashigaru with these because they are a lot easier to use and they require a lot less training than a bow. In fact, although in earlier times you would have a ratio between a teppo and a bow, you would have a ratio of two against one. In later periods, you have a ratio of four against one. Now, if you look at this one though, it's too decorated. This is a samurai. Um, Tanegashima Teppo, matchlock type arquebus. A Ashigaru type will be something like this, a lot more plain, if you will. As these start to be employed and as battles become more and more based on correct positioning of your gunners, because of course these were given also to samurai, keep this in mind. When I hear people saying, no, the samurai will never use Tanegashima Teppo, it's dishonorable. 
in what planet? Because in Japanese warfare, Oda Nobunaga saw these, he gave these to all his, to Samurai and Ashigaru. These made the difference. The Ashigaru in this situation, the Ashigaru would be rigorously trained to hold ranks in face, in the face of enemy fire. But if we want to see the importance of proper positioning of Ashigaru gunners and of course Samurai gunners as well, um, we can see, we can go back to 1575, the Battle of Nagashino, because this is a very important battle. In this battle we've got Tokugawa and Oda armies against the Takeda war machine. Now, to help you understand, in the Sengoku Jidai, this battle was a battle of giants, that we have the strongest and most powerful and most dangerous warring clans of the time. Now, this battle is where we see the importance and the efficacy of these. In fact, um, the Takeda clan, the Takeda war machine, was based on heavy cavalry charges of heavy samurai cavalry, um, which normally would work perfectly. But in this battle, what we see, we see constant waves of Takeda cavalry charges, which are completely thwarted because of properly and intelligently positioned Ashigaru gunners who just break the bone of the Takeda war machine. They destroy the mounted samurai into pieces with these. So, to reiterate, the Ashigaru go from unwell-trained uh, mercenaries to rigorously trained professional soldiers. And it is in Edo Jidai, during time of peace, that some area, in some areas some Ashigaru would actually acquire the title of samurai. All right, number ones, I hope that you enjoyed this video. It was a brief but detailed explanation on the Ashigaru. If you want to know more about the Ashigaru, I could make this into a series because there is a ton of things to say about this very interesting kind of soldier, just as much as there is to say about the samurai, really. Of course, if you've got any requests that you'd like me to talk about a specific topic, let me know in the comments below. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Mata ashita ne? Sarabah!